Hello all. Today we are going to understand the characteristics of an ideal op amp. By now, I think you are familiar with an op amp and the different terminals of an op amp. Okay. So this is I have uh, shown here an op amp uh, symbol where here you have the non-inverting terminal shown here, the inverting terminal, then the two terminals which is connected to the supply voltages which is one half one is positive and the other one is negative then you have an output terminal from which you get the output so when you have an op amp connected or kept in this way without giving any feedback that is you are not um, connecting anything from the output to the input side that is what we call as a feedback right get uh, getting a fraction of the output to the input side so if that is not there or if it is connected in such a manner as you see here in the figure you can call this op amp working is working in a an open loop configuration okay this is an open loop op amp okay because there is no feedback path and you can call it as the open loop op amp Similar to the what you studied in the case of a normal amplifier where we have not used using our transistor, okay, not op amps. So in that case also we were uh, naming it in this way, that is it was open loop uh, when you are not giving any feedback. Here also you don't give any feedback and we call it as an open loop op amp. Now we are going to understand what are the characteristics of an ideal op amp. So when you say it is an ideal op amp, uh, so this is the case. Uh, or the features I mean, with, a, with an op amp is expected to show ideally but then practically you cannot say these are the characteristics okay so one and uh, one by one we'll understand each one the first one is we can say that the open loop gain the open loop gain is infinite AV and that is infinite so when you say infinite you can say that the um, even if you give a very small input you are going to get a very large input right so that is the case uh, op amps are basically um, amplifiers which amplify the given input signal so in the case of an op amp there are two terminals so you say that the difference given difference of the uh, signals given at the um, input and non-inverting and inverting terminal that difference will be amplified at the output so a very small difference will give rise to a very high input and uh, ideally I can say that the open loop um, gain should be highly infinite okay and the second ideal characteristic is that the input resistance which we call normally as ri okay that is the input resistance that is input in resistance offered or uh, existing between the in, uh, inverting and non inverting terminals and th this input resistance should be we know that in the case of a very good op amp it should be very high so ideally speaking it should be infinite okay so input resistance between the inverting and non inverting terminal that should be infinite so that is the ideal characteristics and the third one is the output resistance also you know output how should be the output resistance of an um, amplifier output resistance should be or we normally design is uh, design uh, in such a way that the output uh, resistance is zero right so I can say that the output resistance um, or very low practically we always say it should be very low so here I can say that ideally speaking the uh, output resistance should be equal to zero okay uh, so one thing I forgot to say was when input in input resistance is infinite we mean to say that the input side the resistance is highly very very high which means that the input current is very very low or ideally speaking so I can say that the input current is zero so in that case or in that with that concept I can say this is an uh, normally op amp is an voltage controlled device that is current is since the input resistance is very high or infinite uh, input current is very low so then I can call it as a voltage controlled uh, current is not controlling it so we can say that as a voltage controlled device or PAM as an voltage controlled device okay then 
uh, when I say output resistance is zero, I can also say that the uh, the load resistance uh, doesn't play any role here. The load resistance doesn't have any influence in the characteristic or in the features of an op-amp or in the, it will not uh, actually govern the gain or anything. Okay. And the fourth uh, characteristic is that the bandwidth. You know, you have studied about bandwidth. The bandwidth means that um, you can, it is the range of the frequency over which you, the gain is in steady okay so bandwidth is can be considered as the range of frequencies over which the gain is steady so we expect a large range of frequency over which the output is uh, or the gain is um, actually steady so that means ideally speaking what do you expect ideally speaking i would expect a very large bandwidth or infinite bandwidth which means over an infinite range of frequencies, over a very large range of frequencies, my gain is going to be steady. So I, I would say that the fourth feature of an ideal op-amp is that the bandwidth is infinite. Okay. Or we can say that it has infinitely wide frequency response. In, the, in that way also we can write infinitely uh, wide frequency response. It means that for a large range of frequencies, the gain is going to be steady. Okay. So then uh, fifth property is that it's common mode rejection ratio. You have studied in the previous lecture what is common mode rejection ratio. So that is actually the differential mode gain divided by common mode gain. You have learned, right? So that means common mode gain is when you give the a same signal at the non-inverting and inverting terminal, uh, then the gain you get is actually the common mode gain. And you know, what do you expect ideally a common mode gain? Ideally speaking, when you give a same signal at the inverting and non-inverting terminal, what should be the output? Output should be A times even minus V2. So I can say that if one of the input voltage is V1 and V2, both of them are same, ideally I should get VO as 0, right? That is the expected ideal case. But we have learned that even if you give a common signal at the input terminals, you will get an output voltage practically. Okay. So ideally speaking, what I can say that the common mode gain is zero. That even if I give a common signal, I won't get any output. Okay. So then if I don't get an output, if you give a common signal, what I would say the gain is zero. Right. So I can say that the common mode gain, ideally speaking, should be equal to zero. Then what should be the ideal case of CMMR? Uh, common mode rejection. Sorry, it is common mode rejection ratio. What is the I value? I yeah, infinite. Because since ideally I expect common mode gain as zero, I expect ideally the value of common mode rejection ratio as infinite. Okay. Now the sixth one. The sixth one is about the slew rate that also you have learned that is actually the change in the output voltage with respect to time so that is uh, slew rate so output voltage that is added, basically that shows the response of an op amp right that is within a very short period of time if the output uh, or the if the response during a very small time it should be quite fast quite fast in the sense within a very short time your voltage should pick up or the voltage variation according to the input you know that according to the input voltage the output all in according to the variation in the input voltage the output voltage also should vary right but then op amp will have a very uh, a little time delay so slurry basically means um, what is the change in the output voltage with respect to the time okay and what I would expect in the case of an ideal op amp within a very short time or within no time the response should be should take place or, or the output should fluctuate within uh, no fluctuate in the sense output should respond to the input 
within a uh, very short time or within no time so i can say ideally speaking uh, the variation in the output should take place uh, with respect to time with respect to very small or ideally speaking within no time or within a zero time the voltage should vary a response should happen so that means that the skew rate ideally should be what it should be infinite okay so these are the features of an ideal op amp okay ideal is an ideal case only even you can never expect a practically these values you will not get practically uh, these values from an op amp so ideally speaking open loop gain should be infinite okay input resistance should be infinite output resistance should be zero then the bandwidth should be infinite common mode rejection ratio should be infinite and slew rate should be infinite so these are the features of an uh, ideal op amp so this is very good an understanding of an ideal op amp feature is very good in order to understand the practical op amp characteristics so we'll just go through the practical uh, cases also so practically speaking i can say that the gain should be very high right on practically this gain uh, is something of the order of 10 raised to 6 so i say that it uh, may be something of the order between 10 raised to 4 and 10 raised to 5 it may vary but practically i it is around the range of around 10 raised to 6 or i can say that varies between the order 10 raised to 4 to 10 raised to five range okay so this is the practically the gain you can expect from an op amp when it is connected in the open loop configuration okay and uh, you might to suggest to um, make you remind you that the normally we express this is a very high value so normally we express it in terms of decibel and uh, this uh, we can express as 20 log uh, to the base 10 the output voltage divided by the input voltage input voltage varies if it is only at the non inverting it will be that voltage if it is only at the inverting it we can call that voltage if it is if it is there uh, um, if you give op voltages at both the terminals it will be it will be the difference between the two that will be the uh, input voltage i say so this is the practical value of a gain of the van gain now uh, i can say that about the Uh, input resistance we say that practically ideally the input resistance should be uh, very high infinite right but then uh, input resistance normally will be very high and the typical value of the input resistance is of the order of um, kilo it is all uh, kilo ohm to mega ohm range normally so i can typically say around 250 kilo ohm to 40 mega ohm more in most of the practical op amps so in way it will be of the higher range input resistance and to, to be a very good op amp it we expect the input resistance to be at least in the mega ohm range okay now uh, the third one is the output resistance and output resistance how it should be in the case of an ideal op amp yeah it should be zero so we we expect practically also the value should be uh, lesser right and uh, the typical value is of the order of um, around 100 ohm that means it is only in the ohmic range not in kilo ohm or mega ohm like that in the case as in the case of an input resistance it is of the order of around 100 ohm okay then about the common mode uh, rejection ratio okay so then common mode rejection ratio so that value we know ideally it should be infinite but practically it's not in that case that is common mode uh, there will be common mode gain that is even if you give a same voltage at the non inverting and inverting terminal even then you will get an output voltage and that voltage is what you got get uh, called as an um, output offset voltage right and that uh so because of that uh, i can say that common mode gain will be there so practically speaking cmrr will be will never be infinite and this value is typically of the order of 90 and decibel so it is the typical range it can vary somewhere around the, this 90 decibel and you can just to remind you how will you calculate cmrr it is 20 log to the base 10 okay uh differential mode gain 
divided by uh, common mode k and that is it is in terms of decibel okay when you do like this then the fifth one is about the slew rate uh, you know that slew rate is infinite that is fr frequency response output voltage response should be quite fast or infinity um, should be the slew rate and practically speaking the value is around um, 0 0.3 to around 12 volt per microseconds so in one microsecond this much voltage variation maximum 12 volt around that voltage uh, output can vary so that is about the slew rate then about the <coughs> And the bandwidth the bandwidth also uh, in an open loop configuration uh, we though the ideally speaking we can say that the bandwidth should be infinite but practically without a feedback configuration or without any feedback the bandwidth of the op amp is very very low it is of the around, around 5 to 10 hertz only but then um, with the feedbacking that you will study later with the feedbacking the uh, bandwidth will be quite significantly high it comes to around 1 megahertz in order that you will learn later okay so in this video we try to understand uh, practically and ideally what are the characteristics of an op amp so practically or ideally speaking the op amp is uh, perfect in behavior the gain the input resistance output resistance cmrr and slew rate or the bandwidth they are uh, the characteristics are exactly uh, the way which you expect or very uh, ide uh, ideally very very perfect values so that is the feature of an ideal op amp but then coming to a practical case you know that practically when you work out an electronic circuitry um, the features may be quite uh, different from the ideal case but then uh, we with the values are uh, at least or, a, or the value or the ranges come to or we design in such a way that the values are somewhere in the order of the ideally speaking cases but then there may be the in the infinite case or the zero case which you say cannot be all, uh, like that but then the values when you say infinite practically in which, when you say infinite in ideal case practically it will not be infinite but then it will be quite a larger value okay when you say ideally it is zero some values practically when you design it the value will be some there will be some significant value but will it will be a lower value so this is all about the characteristics of an ideal and a practical op amp so thank you very much